Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the Murdoch DeFi YouTube channel. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at Wizard, which is a new play to earn game that is coming on Ava or sorry, on the Avalanche network. Uh, here in the next couple of days or so, you can see the pre-sale is two hours before the public mint, which is in about three, almost four days. So that is what to expect in terms of timeline. The collection is going to be eight, 1,888 unique characters based on the uh, the power of the Avalanche blockchain, right? So that is what we're going to be talking about today. So we'll be going through all their website. We'll check out their roadmap. Uh, we'll, we'll check out, um, you know, some of the artwork is posted here, but we'll look a little bit more into that and go over some FAQs and then also read through their white paper and see what they are doing differently um, to help alleviate you know, some of the problems that a lot of these play to earn games are facing. Uh, and, and really what I'm talking about is just like the inflationary nature of a lot of these games, right? Uh, especially with the reward token. So that's what we're going to be talking about today and determining if uh, this could be potentially the next pizza game, right? Uh, which we all know and love and did extremely well for, for a lot of people. Uh, that being said, guys, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel here. Uh, and then after you subscribe, you're going to definitely, definitely, definitely want to make sure that you're hitting the notification bell to make sure that you're staying up to date with all the content that I post here on the channel. Um, also, if you are interested in what is coming next in the world of Wizardly, uh, then you're going to want to watch this uh, Tasha's Wild Magic video. Do give an update on exactly how everything is going to be functioning when we release or when we launch, how it all impacts Wizardly as a whole, and then of course, and what we're doing in terms of audits and what we're doing in terms of time of launch. So definitely check that out. This is the last video I put up. Uh, very, very cool stuff going on there. Um, so let us jump into it here. So it says, what is Wizart? Wizart is a play to earn avalanche on-chain game inspired by our favorite decentralized online games like Pizza Game. In the or in order to play Wizart, you must own a wizard or a goblin NFT and then stake them in the dungeon. And as you can see here, you can see some of these wizards and some of the goblin NFTs as well. They look pretty cool. Uh, wizards are ERC 721 NFTs that produce the Mist token every minute when staked. Since Mist is an ERC 20 token, it can be traded on popular exchanges like Trader Joe and Pangolin. So that is going to be the reward token that uh, that they're going to be launching and the token that you're going to be earning when you're staking any of your NFTs in the actual um, in the actual dungeon, right? Uh, we chose Avalanche Chain because of an amazing community and the low gas fees, the democratizing way to earn uh, minting and trading of NFTs regardless of wallet size, right? So some features here. So wizards and goblins can be staked in the dungeon to cast mist. Just be careful to not overwork them. Uh, additional 10,000 wizards and goblins can be minted using the in-game currency called mist. Uh, and then 60% of the revenue will be used for the mist and AVAX liquidity pair on Trader Joe. And so they say here, what will be your strategy? Will you go for the long-term benefit? and increase your faith. So over time, a player can purchase wizards, wizard tools from simple items like a wand to more complex items such as potions and much, much more. Uh, these wands help increase the, the rate at which you produce the mist tokens. And the goal is simple, cast as much mist as possible, earn and level up your wands and dominate the sorcerer's dungeon. Um, again, they have 8,888 uh, unique NFTs that are going to be a part of their initial launch. And uh, and yeah, but jumping down into their roadmap here, uh, obviously they've done some of this stuff already. Uh, they're going to be minting their uh, official pre-sale mint for Wizard becomes available for whitelisted members. Public minting goes live for Wizard. Uh, let the casting begin. And then layer one, the goal is to hold and cast as much mist as you can in order to become the biggest whale in layer two, the enchanted forest awaits you. So they already have layers, uh, you know, after the additional one planned. 
So layer two is top holders of mist will be entered into round one pre-sale for layer two, where you can exchange your mist for scrolls tokens. So top holders of divine will be entered in the round two pre-sale for layer two, where you exchange your divine for the scrolls and spell tokens. So that is a little bit of insight into the second layer. Um, and then some FAQs here. How much are they going to be minting for? So you're looking at if you're currently on the whitelist, and I believe that there might be uh, still some time to get in on the whitelist. I know that we did give away a couple whitelist spots within the premium Discord server. So if you want to check that out, definitely hop into their Discord. You can find the links to that directly here on their website, wiz-art.games. Uh, but pre-sale price or, or whitelist price is 2.5 AVAX per mint. And then the public sale price is going to be 3 AVAX. Um, and with the price of AVAX right now, uh, it's definitely... Um, I, I mean, I guess when we talk about like what we typically see in terms of uh, the mint price for these NFTs, I would say that this is a little bit higher than what we would typically see. Granted, you know, the price of AVAX has dropped, you know, significantly over the last few weeks uh, and even more so today. Things are really, really crazy. <clears throat> but whitelist price, 2.5 AVAX per mint. Public sale price is 3 AVAX. Um, this is the current number of um, what I would consider Gen Zero mints. What types of wallets can be used by? Okay, MetaMask, obviously. Uh, how can I get free giveaway to get whitelisted? Be active in the Discord. So there you go. Just join up their Discord and determine how you can jump on the whitelist there. How many NFTs can I purchase for each wallet? Um, so the max is 10, FT, 10 NFTs per wallet, mint only on their official website. Special wands will extend their limit. So let's go ahead and hop into their white paper here and discuss a little bit more as it pertains to the actual in-game mechanics. So like we were saying, these first generation of the NFTs, the 8,888, are going to be minted with AVAX. And then they're additionally going to be having 10,000 additional wizards and goblins that can be minted using the in-game currency, which as we've discussed previously is the mint token. 60% of that revenue um, on the initial mint is going to the Mist and AVAX liquidity pair, which is good. Uh, and that's, that's, that's good. I like to see that uh, because typically sometimes the way that these initial mint funds are dispersed are kind of um, not the best, I would say. So this is good that 60% of the revenue is going to the actual pair. Um, like to see that as well. So reading on here, when staked, when you have your NFTs staked into the dungeon, wizards and goblins can produce mist every minute for MPM um, at the rate of one miss per minute. Uh, that you can claim and you can use to purchase wands, right? As wizards and goblins are NFTs, they can be traded on popular sites such as NFT Trade um, and then Tofu NFT as well, which are probably the two prominent um, NFT marketplaces on the AVAX ecosystem. Um, so Gen Zero, again, 8,888, and then all tokens from minting Gen 1 are going to be burned, right? So they have their Gen 0 mints, and then those rest of the remaining uh, 10,000 after that first Gen 0, or what we would call Gen 1, is going to be used, or is going to be minted using the mist tokens. Uh, and all of those Gen 1s that are minted with those mist are going to be burned, uh, well, the tokens rather. So this is a big deflationary mechanic, which is good. Um, you know, because as we've talked about, not only in this video, but in previous videos as it pertaining to these play to earn games is that there's so much inflation uh, because of the limitless supply of the uh, of the reward token. So it really helps when there are massive deflationary mechanics, which that is right. So when minting wizards or goblins, there is a 46% chance that you will mint a goblin which is a more skillful wizard who can who can spell mist two times faster. So instead of producing one per minute, you're going to produce two per minute. There's a 4% chance that you will mint a goblin wizard or goblin, a mystical wizard, who can um, produce three mist uh, per minute or three times faster, right? So 
The way that they're gonna be splitting the revenue up from the Gen Zero Mint, again, we talked about 50% going to the LP, a liquidity pair of the missed AVAX on Trader Joe. 20% goes to community building, 5% for charity, 10% um, for operational costs and further development, and 5% for the Devs Dungeon, which on a on an initial mint, I think that is the lowest fee, like not even in the ballpark of what we would typically see. Uh, but 5% dev fee on the initial mint is extremely low. Um, so I appreciate that as well. I think typically we see like between 25 and 35%. So it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, but that is cool to see 5% for the dev fee on the initial mint. <laughs> so initially, you can only stake a maximum of 10 wizards and goblins in the dungeon. And then as your dungeon expands, you can use more wizards and goblins for casting mist. Uh, a regular wizard casts one mist per minute while the goblin casts two mist per minute. Um, when you claim the casted mist, 10% of it gets burned and 10% goes to the enchanting chamber. More on that later. So 20% in total on claim tax. Uh, of which half of that is burnt, right? So that is good as well, deflationary mechanic. Uh, each wizard and goblin gets fatigued as they work nonstop casting mist. The higher the mystic production or MPMs, the faster the wizard and goblins are fatigued. Um, so this is another way to kind of play the game or an important mechanic to, uh, to kind of pay attention to and make sure that you understand how that works. Um, so as your, your wizards and goblins get fatigued, they're going to produce less and less mist, eventually stopping their mist production altogether. For a wizard and goblin to recover, it needs to be unstaked and then rested up to uh, for up to 12 hours, depending on how fatigued they, uh, they are uh, in particular or as it pertains to each individual. While recovering, the wizards and goblins do not cast any mist. So that is a, an important component to understand as well that once your um, wizards and goblins are fatigued, they will eventually stop producing any of those mist tokens, at which point you're gonna have to unstake them, leave them unstaked for a time, and then uh, be able to restake them so they can start to earn more mist tokens, right? So mist is an ERC-20 token. Uh, again, this is gonna be on AVAX. That can be used in-game to buy wizards, goblins, wands, and can be traded on popular exchanges, right? So you can, I mean, it's completely up to you what you're going to do or what you want to do with uh, with all the mist tokens once you've acquired them, if you want to put that back into the game, or you could be able to sell those and cash out completely up to you. All wizards and goblins cast mist forever, which means mist does not have a maximum supply. And this is what I was talking about in the beginning and a few times throughout the video so far is that since there is not a capped supply or a maximum supply, um, this is essentially just printing new tokens, right? Um, and as the supply starts to increase, this is going to have a negative impact on the actual price of mist. Uh, so it's important that, you know, they have enough of these deflationary mechanics within their game to, um, to help stabilize some of the price action. Uh, because as the game progresses, as more tokens start to get printed, then you know, this is going to have a compounding effect on the overall price action of the MIST token. So that's important to also understand. With me, how I typically play these NFT games or play to earn games, uh, I'm looking at, uh, if I can get on the whitelist, mint a couple. And then as soon as I'm getting my return on investment from my, my initial mint, I am pulling that out. And then I will continue to play the game that way. But, um, you know, in, in my opinion, I play these play to earn games just like I would anything else where um, I'm always looking to take out my initial invest investment and then that way what the money that I'm playing with is then house money, right? So that is the same way I go about investing or, you know, I don't even know if you can call this necessarily investing, but more so gambling in these play to earn games, right? So that's very important to, uh, to know like your strategy and have a plan going into this. Um, that way you can kind of have some guidelines to stick to as you start to progress through the actual game. So in much like other play to earn games, they're going to have different tools that you can buy with the mist tokens that are going to help you create or, or earn more mist tokens um, in, a, in a quicker fashion, right? So they have their wands. So get more wizards and goblins to mint wands, which are tools 
that provide a massive boost in misproduction when staked in the dungeon. Still, you can have only one wand per wizard and goblin. So essentially, right, if you have 10 of these wizards and goblins staked in the dungeon, if you wanted to buy a wand that is not going to cover all 10, you're going to have to buy 10 individual wands to increase the mist per minute that that specific either wizard or goblin produces, right? All tools have a limited supply and are bought using the mist and divine tokens. So 70% of the misting cost is burned and the rest, which is 30%, is used for further improvement on uh, or to further improve the mist slash divine liquidity pair on Trader Joe, which is again going to, since you're providing more liquidity to, to the pair, this is going to help the charts as well maintain a less volatile price. Um, the game will start with three wands and there will be new tiers added regularly. So they have their three tiers here. Uh, tier one, all seeing star wand, every wizard's and goblin's best friend when casting mist. They have their tier two, frozen souls wand, uh, magical and numinous, uh, a wizard's and goblin's equipped uh, with it can become dangerously efficient. And then they have their tier three wand as well. Uh, they do also have their enchanting chamber. You can stake your hard-earned mist in the enchanting chamber to get mist even faster. So this would be like the freezer um, over on pizza game. So same mechanics there. You're essentially staking your mist tokens. However, typically with this, there is a pretty big, um, uh, like if you decide to unstake before the time lock, then there's pretty, pretty much a big tax on that. But it says it takes two days to upspell Mist from your enchanting chamber using the slow method and 10% of it will be spoiled. 10% uh, of it will spoil. If you want to upsell in a hurry or upspell in a hurry, 25% stays in the enchanting chamber as a flat tax and 25% will be spoiled. The spoiled tokens are then burned. Um, so that is how that works. Something to keep in mind too if you decide to uh, enter the enchanting chamber, right? Then they have their divine fountain. A mystical fountain is where you can get divine to start earning divine. You need to create a mist AVAX liquidity pair on Trader Joe and then stake those LP tokens in the divine phantom or Div divinity fountain. The more LP tokens that you stake, the more divine tokens that you get. Uh, and then I imagine that these divine tokens will probably be used to buy other in-game in -game items as well. So divine is an ERC-20 token capped and deflationary inspired by the chicken game with compliments to the mist token in wizards right the the idea is buy wizards and goblins and cast some mist and then stake your mist and avax liquidity pair in the divinity fountain to farm the divine token improve your dungeon and buy wands using the divine token uh, use dungeon skill points to reduce eat or produce even more mist uh, and again this is essentially how the cycle repeats itself. They also give some, some cool information on strategy, which I'm not going to go into because this video is already getting pretty long. But uh, all in all, guys, a bunch of information on their um, on their uh, their white paper here. So very, very detailed. I'd love to see that. Uh, but let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section of today's video about Wizard and their upcoming release of their play to earn game. Uh, I think it sounds pretty cool, uh, and I think that it's, it's uh, like, overall still nice to see, like, these kinds of projects come out, uh, and is is a little bit refreshing uh, with the current market sentiment, um, which is not good, right? So, that being said, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next one.